أنا يا أخي في الله واسمع من هجي خذ يا أخي في الله بيدي وساعدي سلفية في النهج نهج الأنبياء وجميع أصحاب الرسول محمد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله so brothers the reason I wanted to share my experience with you is because you guys are obviously here you're studying yeah when you go back inshallah to your homes you're inshallah ta'ala gonna become du'at you're gonna become teachers you're gonna become educators right um, and one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to gain over the last few years is a bit of experience with regards to how the da'wah scene for lack of a better term runs in the west especially in the UK, Canada and America um, a lot of the key figures in terms of popularity that people know I know them personally I have their phone numbers we speak on WhatsApp we meet in person I've been invited to speak uh, on platforms with these individuals and through that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me an insight with regards to the way things work behind closed doors and I wanted to share this with you and I'm hoping that inshallah you can share it with those that are not here um, so they can become aware of the situation because you're going to go back and you may not necessarily know what to expect, what's going on, who you know to trust and what not. I'm not going to be mentioning names or anything like that but I want to just share my story with you and give you examples so you can be clued on yourself when you go back inshallah. Brothers, we all know the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu an in Sahih Muslim and it's recorded in many other places when he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Ya Rasulullah we used to be in a state of evil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us good after this good that we're experiencing will there be evil once again and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to him he said yes he asked him Ya Rasulullah after this evil that's gonna come will good return once more and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Naam, it will, but fihi dakhan. In it, it will be tainted, it will be smoky. It will not be a pure good. That pure good will not return. And then Hudayfa radiallahu an, he asks the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, this dakhan, this taint, this filth that's going to mess up the pure good, what will it be? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is a people who are upon a sunnah and that is not my sunnah and they are upon a guidance that is not my guidance some of you will reject them and some of you will affirm them now that sounds pretty scary they are upon a sunnah other than the prophet sunnah they are upon a guidance according to a guidance other than that which is the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that's what the prophet referred to as the good time that's the good time then hudayfa radiyallahu an he asks, he says, Ya Rasulullah, after this good, will there be an evil once more? And this is the part that I want you to pay attention to. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, du'at. The evil will be people who are doing da'wah, they're calling. Pay attention brothers, because inshallah you're going to go back and you're going to become du'at, or you're already du'at inshallah. The evil, the Messenger said, it will be du'at. Ala abwabi jahannam. They are standing at the doors of the hellfire. Anyone who obeys them will fall into the fire. Brothers, the problem, the biggest evil you could say, or from the biggest evils, if you take this hadith that we are facing in the world, particularly in the West, the evil is from the du'at. So now you have to make sure that you're grounded in a way that when you return back, inshallah, you're going to be from the du'at who are calling to the gates of Jannah, not the du'at who are calling to the gates of the hellfire. And that's deep, right? Because me and you would think, oh, the problem is the West. Because when you go back, that's what everyone's going to say. And you're probably hearing it already. The problem is all these laws that David Cameron is passing. The problem is Donald Trump said X, Y, Z. The problem is this happened in Germany. The problem is that happened in France. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't mention to us anything about politics. He didn't tell us that 
the, 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 the governments of the disbelievers is what's going to be a problem for us or there was going to be you know governments of you know believers that was going to be a problem for us the Prophet ﷺ told us that the problem is du'at and that's very serious and me you know I don't mean I don't want to say it like that but the da'wah that I was I was doing I mean I could definitely say it wasn't really <laughs> necessarily directing people towards the gates of paradise and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves me and the rest of us from being from those who call to the gates of the hellfire but when I was more closer towards that than anything else I want to share with you a few things that made me realize that the initial da'wah that I was doing was very wrong it was going in a totally different direction and inshallah now it's in a more correct direction and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us consistency and steadfastness on this Amen. Amen. brothers there are some buzzwords that when we hear we straight away cling to these people if you hear someone says Akhi, Quran and Sunnah straight away yes that's my person right if it says Tawheed and Sunnah yes Straight away, these are, these are buzzwords that make you feel like, Akhi, we're on the same wavelength. Then on top of that, when they say, Akhi, the Sahaba and, and the Salaf, we follow, we follow the understanding of the Salaf, as Salihin. Straight away, you start to feel like, these are my people, I can, I can roll with them. I mean, I too, you know, was, you know, I've been through uh, brief patches with different groups. I've been affiliated with the likes of, you know, Hizb al-Tahrir for a period of time, with the likes of the Brelvis, even the Diobandis for a period of time. I've been through, when I finally made my way, what I thought was the end of the train, but it wasn't. I was like, okay, Quran, Sunnah, according to the understanding of the Salaf. And then I see so-and-so institute and group there, and this speaker there, and they all, they're all saying the exact same thing. So we started to hold hands, and I started to get invited to their conferences, and we started to you know, chill and you know, travel together and do all, sorts, all sorts of things behind closed doors. So <coughs> they sold me a dream. That these guys were calling to the Quran and the Sunnah according to the understanding of the Salaf. But, and, 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 and when I was with them, and I myself wasn't actually talking about Tawheed. And I wasn't actually talking about the Sunnah. And you would re hear, really hear me mention the Salaf. And I was talking about Zina, and then you know the brothers and the sisters in the crowd like crying. They're like, wow, that was so deep. And you talk about, you talk about fear in Allah, and you talk about the day of judgment. Everyone's like, wow, you know, you know the, the brother can speak, you know, mashallah, he's touching people's hearts. And I would get called by more masajid. And they would say, Akhi, come, come, we want, we want to invite you here. To the point where literally I had two, one, a year and a half where I sp spent basically the whole year traveling. I spent more time outside the house than inside the house. I was going from country to country, from America to Canada to here to all over the world to the point where I was booked up for over a year. I was booked up. This masjid wanted me there. That masjid, this university wanted me there. All over. Everyone wants you when you talk about these issues. And they loved you. And I thought, okay, this is good. This is good. Everything is running smooth. And then, you know, when uh, I started to spend some time studying with Ustad Abdul Rahman, and we started to, you know, go, you know, scratch the surface of the books and started to, you know, study the issue of Tawheed with a bit more, you know, uh, depth than the issue of Sunnah and Bid'ah and everything. And we started to really hold up. Like me personally, I started to realize this is an issue that I need to discuss as well. For example, ISIS, right? These people are innovators. If we don't speak out against them, then what's going to happen? People are going to get caught up and then they're going to go down there. I remember that was the first time I actually dived out of the realm of talking about issues like zina and haram relationships and you know respecting your parents and back but it's the first time I it was it was it was it was a topic that it was strange to me I, I never dived into talking about the importance of the sunnah and staying away from bid'ah and the importance of knowledge and that was my first time and when I started to do that and I entered into that I told you they used to love me before right they used to call me everywhere I I started to get a lot less love. A lot less love. There were people who would publicly refute ISIS. They would refute ISIS. And now I'm coming out and refuting ISIS. But they've got a problem with me. Why? One of the main reasons was because they necessarily did not agree with ISIS. But the ideology of ISIS they had an inclination to it. They had an inclination to that Khariji kind of view. And then I started to realize, hold up, this issue of the Sunnah, when you start talking about it, 
it starts to turn people against you. Not that it starts turning people against you, the people turn against you. They don't, they don't want to call me no more. I actually had one brother call me and said, Emran, if you release this video, I'm gonna, and he's a daddy. He said, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna stand the night making dua to Allah against you. And they loved me a few weeks before that. They were telling everyone, watch my videos. They were saying, come give a talk. I invited this person to my masjid. Come give a talk at my masjid. It was all love. But now he says, Akhi, I'm going to make dua to Allah against you. I said, okay. But still, the issue of ISIS wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Because majority, majority of the people really did disagree with ISIS and, and they weren't, you know, on that view. So it, 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 I didn't get as much adversity from these, you know, du'at, yeah, these uh, popular du'at, uh, as, as much as I did later. When did the real controversy start to come? Brothers, I started to mention the understanding of the Salaf al-Salihin a lot more. You know, when I, my videos, I would talk about the importance of, you know, even, even like my appearance started to change. Man, why are you growing a beard for? Man, why are you growing a beard, Akhi? Don't you know you're going to get stopped at the airports, Imran? You know, I'm telling you, these are du'at. These are people that are loved. These are people that when you go back, if you, inshallah, which you all will graduate, the ones who get the highest colors, they're going to come knocking for you straight away. Wallahi, I'm telling you, that's, they have, they, that's, that's how they move. That is how they move. They have an eye on who's graduating. The moment you come out and you step out, they've got their eye on you straight away. They tell me, Akhi, why are you growing a beard? You're going to get stopped at the airport. I'm Ryan. The youth are not going to be able to relate to you. I'm like, I'm trying to be like the Prophet said him. And I believe it's obligatory on me. But Imran, you know, there's, there's difference of opinion on the issue. And so I'm like, I know there's difference of opinion, but I'm supposed to follow, follow the text and the evidences. And, and, and I've seen it to be obligatory on me. Imran, look, look at the way you dress. You got, you got the thobe on, Charles above the ankle. Imran, what are you doing? I remember I, I, was, I, 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 I gave a lecture one time in one country in Europe and then they told me, Imran, why are you telling people to put their trousers above their ankles? It's an issue of difference of opinion. Why are you even bringing that to the table? But at that side, I started to mention more of the importance of the Sahaba, you know, and, and, and the Salaf al-Salihin, the rest of them. And the people would come to me and I'd sit with people behind closed, I'm telling you, behind closed doors. Say, me, Imran, don't you know that the time of the Salaf was different to our time? Of course we love the Salaf. Of course we understand, follow their understanding. But this particular reality, this waqia that we're living in, you know the Salaf of Salih, he never saw that, Imran. So for you to bring their quotes to the table and mention that, you know, Hassan al-Basri said this and Imam Malik said this and Imam Ahmed said this, Imran, it's not relevant. Imran, are you silly? Are you stupid, Imran? What are you doing? What are you doing? These people, they were great for their time and their role models. They, they, and, and they would always mention, Imran, follow them spiritually. Meaning like, they were the best worshippers. You know, take that path. But come on, to the point where, and this is going to shock you brothers, one of the main, one of the main, one of the main du'at in the UK, in the West, he actually said to us, Imran, he, he didn't mention my name, he was talking to someone else who was in the gathering, but also to me, and he, and he actually said, he said, he said, don't read books and quote what you read from the books. I'm like, well, so what do you want us to do? You don't want us to read the books. Or you want us to read the books, but you don't want us to quote what's inside them. So what are we reading the books for? What's our, what's our objective for going to these books? If we're not going to take, what, it's, not, it's not supposed to be something that we act upon. So I'm not supposed to read it and just leave it at the back of my head. I'm not supposed to act upon it. He's saying when, when you come to the books of the Salaf, they want it to just be theoretical. They don't want us to bring it to the table. And they tell you, Imran, we live in a different time. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, brothers. For a long time, I was actually of this view. That, you know, it's a different time. It's true. It's, it's a different time. You know, this is something that's never been experienced before. So, that, you know, the Salaf are not here to direct us and guide us. So we've got to kind of make things up as we go along. And then I started to reflect. You know, when you start to reflect... When you start to reflect upon what you're doing, you start to realize, hold up, there's a bit of an inconsistency with, you know, what the reality is and what you're doing. Like, for example, by us having this view that, Akhi, we need to make things up as we go along in the da'wah. Uh, is, is that not exactly what a bid'ah is? Is da'wah not worship? Has it not been codified and set down to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Is it not his path? And it's his path, right? So I'm going to make my own path to da'wah. 
Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave us without the tools? Is, is it that Allah was unaware? Subhanahu wa ta'ala that a time was going to come which the Salaf al Salihin did not experience. And that, you know, he, wouldn't, he didn't leave us behind tools and knowledge and understanding for us to cope in this time. That we have to go out of our way and do our own thing. And you know, an example that my teacher, Ustad Abdul Rahman, he literally just reminded me of just literally two days ago when we were in, 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 in Mecca in the Haram. The, the incident that took place with Abu Bakr radiallahu an after he became the Khalifa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he, he died and, and he left this world, he sent an army. He sent an army that was led by Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu an, radiallahu anhuma. And he sent it to fight the Romans, the biggest superpower at the time, or one of the biggest superpowers at the time. He was 16, 17 years old. That's when the Prophet was alive. The Prophet died now. Abu Bakr takes over. The Sahaba, the Sahaba, they come to Abu Bakr and they say, Yeah, Abu Bakr, you need to call Osama back. You need to call Osama back. You're going to fight the Romans. Abu Bakr said, But, the Prophet sent Usama out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go against the command that the Prophet said. If the Prophet said do something, I'm not gonna be one to go against it. But they said, Yeah, Abu Bakr, things are not the same anymore. Is that what they say? Times have changed. Why? Why? What was the incident? What was the context? Some of the Arabs who were Muslim, they had apostated. We all know the story very well. They apostated and they refused to pay the zakat and they said we gave our allegiance to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he's dead so it's not for you Abu Bakr anymore. And everyone wanted their, you know, there's problems were going on. The point is that internally, internally, you want to send an army to fight the Romans led by a 16, 17 year old general. You want to do that. And we have our own ranks dividing and people apostating. And the Prophet's not even alive anymore, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we don't know what to do. Like we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's... The time has changed, Ya Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, what did he do? He ignored all of that. And he stayed consistent and firm upon his conviction that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do something, we were going to do it. No matter what happens. If the Prophet commanded you, there's khair. And there's guidance in what he said. It doesn't matter if the time changed or not. What the Prophet said in this religion is relevant for all time. So how does this apply for us today? Were we not commanded to follow the understanding of the Sahaba? The hadith that Ustad Abdul Rahman just mentioned to us. Hold on with your mawlatif to the Prophet Sunnah and that of his Khulafa Rashid and, and that of the Khulafa Rashidin. And then the, and we all know the evidence is in the text, the importance of following the Sahaba and the hadith that came about the three most virtuous generations. And we all know this. We were told to hold on to their understanding with our molar teeth. And you want to tell me now, Aki, time's changed. You want to do something new. This is the first thing that made me realize, okay, these guys, all of these, I say all, I mean, I mean literally like 95% of the da'wah in, in, the, in the West. I'm talking about 95, maybe even Wallahi, maybe, maybe even 95 is being generous. Uh, am I being incorrect? Like, a huge amount. <laughs> if it's too large. <laughs> if it's too large. <laughs> I'm not to exaggerate things. But the point is a huge, huge, huge amount. We're talking of the popular da'wah. I'm not saying all da'wah. I'm not saying all da'wah. I mean pop, I mean the guys when you go on YouTube, they got 150,000 views. Of course, not all the that. That's not, I'm, of course, like, I'm not making it sound that bleak. I mean the popular, the ones that everyone listens to. The ones when they come, 5,000 people, 4,000, 3,000 people show up for their talks. That's what I'm referring to. The guys that are going to uh, offer big bucks to the students when they graduate. And Allah's, you know, you guys are going to obviously turn them away, inshallah, for the truth. I so, you know, now they call it the champagne da'wah. That's what they call it. It's the da'wah that when you, when you, when you, when you do it, you, they fly you first class, business class, five-star hotel. You may, it's big money in it. <laughs> but you know what, brothers? Pay attention, please. Wallahi, you know what? You think that's bad? That sounds, that sounds bad, right? That sounds bad. Wallahi, it's worse. I thought that, and rather we thought, that these people, they're fighting the understanding of the Salaf. 
that they're fighting like you know referring things back to their understanding and that's bad obviously it was worse than that it was worse than that because you know what they actually are fighting much more than just that they're actually directly fighting the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu as well and you might say brother what do you mean is that you be exaggerating again I will tell you exactly what I mean very recently um, who, you know, I was issued a challenge last year actually by this Brelvi individual um, uh, and basically what I did was you know, I made a little just video on the issue of uh, the Mawlid and its impermissibility and he sent a challenge to me okay? which obviously I didn't respond to uh, but a year later when the issue of the Mawlid came there was some more shubuhat that needed to be discussed so I made another video and as a side point I just mentioned what he brought up not even directing it at him he obviously wanted to use this as an opportunity and Wallahu alam, uh, basically a thing happened and basically he did like an, a two hour lecture and I was doing a series where I was basically going through point by point uh, the issues that he had brought up, the shubuhat that he had brought up. Now whilst I was doing this, uh, we, you know, the Barilvis and you know, these people when they come together, they're strong, they're united upon their misguidance. And honestly, it's like a storm on social media <laughs> to the point where, I mean, I was told that this, this, this discussion, this, this debate, this dialogue, it went all over the world. Like Brother Guled, who was in Egypt not too long ago, in some random cafe, some brothers are noticing him and saying, Akhi, the Mori debate, and they're coming up to him, in different parts of the world. So it, it became pretty, pretty, pretty big. What happened was that a lot of these du'at, they got in touch with me, <coughs> some publicly, some privately. And they started to attack me, some directly, some indirectly. I was a bit confused. I was like, bro, where, 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 where Axe? Uh, you're, you're, you're my Aki, bro. Uh, we've been together. We flew on planes together. Remember, we, we do stuff together, bro. That's me and you. And now you're publicly out of nowhere. You didn't want to call me. You put up a status on Facebook. But I don't care. You can attack me personally. Well, like, to be, I'm very used to being attacked. It doesn't even hurt me. Um, every now and again, it'll pinch. But it's okay. It's not, it's not that. It's what they were saying. They were belittling the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Brothers, if I tell you Tawheed, its opposite is what? Shirk. If someone tells me, Akhi, stop talking about shirk. It's belittling Tawheed, is he not? It's telling me, Akhi, don't, don't talk about that. The same way I'm talking about the sunnah. This Iman, talk about the sunnah, but don't discuss the bid'ah. Teach them the sunnah without refuting the bid'ah. They tell me, Iman, your discussions of bid'ah, what not? One of them, one of their, uh, you know, big guys, he put out on Facebook and he said, this is a secondary issue. <laughs> so you're telling me the sunnah of the Prophet is a secondary issue? The sunnah of the Prophet is a secondary issue? One of them on the phone called me up, rather he told me to call him. You know what he said to me? He said, Imran, wallahi, look, the, the new da'wah that you're doing, because when I look at it, I, I, I genuinely believe that you're mas'hoor. I believe that you have magic on you. He said, Wallahi, Imran. He said, he said to me, Wallahi. He said, Wallahi, when I saw you, what you're doing from how you were, how you were, yeah. And bear in mind, before I was doing some stupid stuff. I don't know if any of you may not have seen, but I got some stupid stuff online. Some really, you know, dodgy things, stuff for Allah. But the point is, it's there. And you were okay with me doing that. And I wasn't mas'hoor then. I was. I never. I never. I wasn't possessed. Or I never had no magic on me then. In the video, and there's women in the video. There was no magic on me then. But now I'm saying, Akhi, come to the Sunnah of the Prophet And I'm. Mad. I got possessed. I, I've got magic on me. And he said, I genuinely believe that. And I was like, Akhi, it's not. It's not a problem with me that they had. Rather, it was the Sunnah that we were preaching. Now the question comes to mind: Why? 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 Why would these people have an issue with the Sunnah of the Prophet like, didn't you say at the beginning they were saying Tawheed and Sunnah? Yeah. But there's actually an agenda. And this is something that brothers, you need to do a lot of research on inshallah. A lot of research on. Because this is one of the biggest problems that you're going to face in the da'wah in the West. And that is the issue of uniting. The reason they had an issue with me refuting the bid'ah of the innovators is because they see me from their camp. Let me, let me paint you a picture. You're trying to work with the Sufis. 
you, you're, trying to, you're trying to work with this. There's a common enemy. Tony Blair's passing laws. It's true, he is. Little kids are being taken away from their mum and dads. Little kids are being taken away from their mum and dads. Children, like if you have four kids in one family, little kids, 9, 10, 11 years old, and they're all Muslim, because kids have to be now, they have to, you have to give them the right to choose their own religion, and they're all Muslim, they'll start questioning, why are you Muslim? Who made you Muslim? Or your parents told you, they take the dad and the mum away, or they take the kids away from the dad, it's that deep now. They say, we have to come together, we have a common enemy, we have to look aside our differences, and we have to work together with the innovators. We have to work together with the Sufis and the Shia and work, you know, everyone's got different limits. Someone might not work with the Shia and some will and one will say, no, Akhi, I'll work with HT, I'll work with Hizb al-Tahrir and I'll work with, uh, with the, uh, the Diobandis and I'll work with the Ashaira, but I won't work with the Shia. And mom will say, I'll work with the Shia and the Sufis, bro, it's all day. It's all love, Akhi, come to my house. Bring them to my house, it's okay, no worries. It's different, there's different uh, scopes that they have, but the general principle is there. Now, I'm known to be from their camp, right? They know me. And so, 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 Sheikh so and so is out there saying, no, we need to unite. And I'm on the same platform as him. I'm his boy. But I'm messing up his game because I'm talking about Bidah and I'm refuting their beliefs and, they, and, 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 and the deviations that they're trying to come with. <coughs> so he's going to come to me and say, Akhi, you're messing up my work. You're messing up everything that I'm doing, bro. We're trying to cut. Look at, look at, we have access to all these people. You're dividing everyone now. Let's unite, bro. The question you want to ask is, Akhi, would you, are you okay uniting with the people even knowing that their, their unity is upon falsehood? And I asked them and I questioned them, Wallahi, they never have a response to this. And I said, Akhi, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not say about the, the Jews in, 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 a, in, a, in a blameworthy way? They look too united, but their hearts, قُلُوبُهُمْ shatta, they all disunited. They look to, they've come together, there's a common enemy, they've come together, but their hearts are all in different directions. And it's true. If you speak to, if you speak to people from Israel, which is actually Palestine, but if you speak to them, one will tell you, bro, I'm Jew. But I'm an atheist. Another will tell you, bro, I'm a Jew. But I believe in Jesus. And one will tell you, bro, I'm a Jew. Bro, I'm, I'm, but I'm a liberal Jew. And I won't tell you I'm an Orthodox Jew. And one will tell you I'm a Zionist Jew. And they all tell you I am a Jew. But they're all in different directions. They all have different beliefs. And wallahi brothers, if you look at some of these, the, the lineups for some of these, uh, uh, um, these co conferences and these things, you look at them and you're like, bro, that's, look at you, you all look united, but we are all in different views. You all have different beliefs. There was a recent event that was done in the UK where they put five people on the panel, the same panel, and they all had different views. And they practically, you could see like a debate was about to start on, on the table. Where the, the, the guy who was presenting actually had to say, this is a touchy topic, we're going to move on. We're not even going to bring it out because if we do, things might get a bit heated here. And you're all coming together with this facade of unity, but you're all in different directions. Your hearts are all disunited. So we have to unite upon the truth. When Allah mentions unity in the Quran, He always mentions it after He mentions the haq. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا if you look at the Athar, if you look at what Abdullah ibn Abbas and the rest of the Salaf said, if you, if, uh, generally all of the, the, if you bring all of what they say, it means the same thing. It's ikhtilaf, but, but you know, the, the, one of the strongest riway, uh, uh, narrations is that this is talking about the Quran. Hold tight to the rope of Allah, meaning hold tight to the Quran. So I am the Quran and obviously the understanding of the Sahaba and their students and their students because they understood it best. I'm saying let's unite upon that. We're saying let's unite upon that. And they say, Akhi, no, we need to unite even if that's not there. Why? Because you have a common enemy. Brothers, what these people fail to realize is that the common enemy, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the enemy to come in the first place? Why did it come in the first place? When we swayed away from the Quran and the Sunnah. What did the Prophet say? He wasn't even talking about bid'ah in this hadith, you know that, right? He said, when you start to trade in Ina, a type of riba which we're all aware of, and you become pleased with this world, and you start to follow the dunya, and you leave off jihad fi sabilillah, it's all what? Sins. Kabair, major sins. Has the Prophet mentioned bid'ah yet? He hasn't, right? So he said, the Prophet said, if you do just this, just this, riba, just this, Allah will humiliate all of you. And He will not uplift that humiliation. 
until you come back to your religion. What's the religion? Quran. The Salaf al Salihin. We're commanded to follow their understanding, right? The Prophet told us, right? He told us to follow their understanding, right? Oh my, I'm confused. No, no, no. When you, when you take the, the mafhum al muwafaqa, what's worse? Bid'ah or major sins? Bid'ah, right? And it's an yaqi, don't quote to the bid'ah. Leave the bid'ah, put it under the rug. This is the sin and the evil that we did by means of which Allah decided to send this humiliation on us. This is what we did. The shirk and the bid'ah and then the major sins that came with it. This is what we did. And then because of that, Allah sent this humiliation upon us. You want me to stop talking about that. You want everyone to stop talking about that. So you can fight the enemy. That is the punishment of Allah. That is the punishment of Allah. You want, you, so we can go against that person. Do you see? The very source of the problem. The very source of the problem. You want us to stop talking about it. So you can deal with the problem by actually allowing the problem to spread. By keeping quiet. By keeping quiet. And you know, many incidents like this happen. And I realize, subhanAllah, these people are actually fighting the sunnah. <laughs> it's not me. They're not just fighting the, the, the understanding of the salaf, but they're fighting the, the sunnah. Brothers, wallahi, and then uh, is the last point that I want to make, inshaAllah, before I conclude. Actually, it's worse than that. I told you, I thought they were fighting the salaf, I thought that was bad. I realized they're fighting the sunnah. Wallahi, it's worse than that. They're not just fighting the sunnah. They're fighting with tawheed. They're fighting with da'wah to tawheed. And you might say, Imran, are you, being, like, are you, are you over-exaggerating again? Oh, wallahi, brothers, I'm not exaggerating. I'm going to give you two examples. Again, not mention of any names or anything like that. But these are individuals. Each individual is in his own country seen as the boss. The main guy. Or one of the main guys, I should say, rather. That everyone refers back to. To show you how scary it is. And these are things that they won't come out and say publicly. But like I said, it happens behind closed doors. And the dua need to know of this. Just recently, one of them said, he said uh, to us, uh, brothers, um, you see, if like you have, for the sake of unity, yeah, if you have a person who's a Shia, and you're giving da'wah to them, and this person is making dua to Hussein radiallahu an, saying, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, this person is doing what? <coughs> Akbar? No. Is this person a Muslim? No, this person never entered into Islam. I'm giving da'wah to him. He said, don't tell him or don't tell her to stop saying, yeah, Hussein. I'm like, what? Don't tell him to stop, stop don't tell this person to stop saying, yeah, Hussein. Oh, okay, okay, what, sh what shall I say to them then? Oh, talk to him about the glory of Allah. Talk to him about Allah's rahmah. Talk to him about how, about how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Brothers, let me ask you a question. Is that something that we disagree upon? Is there, is, is there a Christian that disagrees with me that Allah is glorious? Is there a Christian that disagrees that Allah is, is merciful? Did the Quraysh disagree with the Prophet that Allah is glorious? Did they disagree on all these things? What do they disagree on? The issue of Tawheed al-Ibadah, singling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only one to be worshipped, alone. Wallahi brothers, we thought a day wouldn't come where they would actually start saying this. Now they're telling us, Akhi, that thing that, 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 talks, that, that gets in the way of unity, if it gets, if, if, if clarifying the shirk that gets in the way of a person's tawheed al-ibadah is getting in the way of our unity, stop talking about it. Talk about other things. A person is bleeding because they got a bullet wound. They just got shot in their chest. And he's got a headache at the same time. You want me to give him paracetamol to treat the headache, but you don't want to deal with a bullet wound in his chest? The person's a mushrik. And you want me to talk to him about Allah's rahmah and it's... The person is going to go to hellfire if he dies like that. There's no rahmah for this individual. I need to say, Akhi, stop, stop praying to Hussein radiallahu an. I guess worse than that. Another individual. Not worse, it's on the same level. Another individual. This issue of al-wala wal-bara. To have bara from the mushrikeen. To free ourselves from the mushrikeen and their shirk. And to ally ourselves with the people of belief and iman. And with their tawheed. 
They're telling us this chapter is closed. This chapter is closed. There's no al wala wal bara anymore. Brothers, please. I know these people personally. I told you, I speak with them. And I'm telling you, these are the main guys, from the main guys, from the main guys. They said there's no al wala wal bara anymore. To the point where some of them said we have to unite with the flag of our country. <laughs> Based on that, they said, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is not a scholar. They say he did not understand Tawheed. They said he did not understand at Tawheed. And he didn't know what he was talking about. And he's not an alim. And they said Ibn Taymiyyah was liberal. <laughs> and, yeah, and Kitab at Tawheed is overrated. Brothers, pay attention, yeah? Pay attention. Is there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he told us Wa'adullahu ladina amanu minkum wa aminu salihat? What? He made a promise to the people of Iman and righteous actions that Allah will give them what tamkeen and khilafa and strength on the earth. We're suffering, right? We are, we don't have strength, do we? We're all over the place. We don't have security. We have fear, right? We're not established on the earth, are we? We're all over the place. Our, our women are, are like clothes. They come, they take one off and they go to the other one. The, the blood of our children is cheap, right? That's our situation, right? So we don't have this khilafah, do we? We don't have this tamkeen on the earth, do we? Allah is saying, I make it a promise to the ones who believe and come with righteous actions that I will give them. I will give them what tamkeen. But there's a condition. Bishart. Which is, worship me alone. Worship me alone. Do not associate a single partner in worship with me. Allah said, the eyes of Surah An-Nur. I have 54, 55, something like that. Brothers, we are suffering. You take the mafum of the ayah, the opposite. The mafum of uh, uh, mukhalafah, sorry. You take the opposite understanding of the ayah. If we do come with shirk, will Allah give us tamkeen? Rather, what we have of tamkeen, Allah will take it away, right? What strength we have, Allah will take it away, right? What security we have, we will take it away. So when you look at us and our problem and the calamity and the chaos we're in, can we, is it safe to say it's a direct result of the shirk that is in the ummah? Is it, a, is it okay to say that? It is. So is there anything that's needed more than Tawheed? Is there anything that's needed more than Tawheed? And then one of their big boys comes and says, Kitab Tawheed is from the most overrated books. Is there anything that's needed more than a book on Tawheed? You bring me a book that's amazing and good on Tawheed like that, and we'll do it, no worries. You're belittling it, and you're putting it in the same context of books of, with kufriyat and shirkiyat in them, saying all these books are overrated. Brothers, they're fighting with Tawheed. And brothers, when I went through this stage, and it's up until just very recently when I came to this realization, I realized that these people, even a little soft spot that I had for them, it's all gone. And like just very recently, in just the last few even weeks, I would say, I feel like I have solidified my position and my stance with regards to uh, to Salafia. And I advise you, uh, my beloved brothers who are more able and more knowledgeable than myself and I'm only saying this just because of maybe some things that I've seen maybe you guys haven't had the opportunity of seeing please please take heed of the hadith, hadith of uh, Hudayfa ibn Yaman I didn't finish it off and I'll just finish it off now when he the Prophet said to him uh, you know du'atun ala abwabi jahannam that there will be people of da'wah doing da'wah and they'll be upon, on the gates of the hellfire that that's going to be the shar, that's going to be the evil times that you're going to experience. Hudayfa said to the Prophet Hudayfa said, Ya Rasulullah, sifhum lana, you know, describe them to us. And the Prophet said, they have skin like you, meaning they're from you, they're human beings. They speak like you, they have your voice. They're going to mention and say words that are going to touch you. And then Hudayfa said, Ya Rasulullah, what is upon me? What is upon me? If I see that time. And the Prophet said, upon you is the jama'ah and the imam. Unite, up, unite, be united with the Muslims under your imam, under your ruler and your leader. 
Look, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, what he asks. That's why I tell you this religion didn't leave anything out for us. Hudayfa said, Ya Rasulullah, what if there is no jama'ah and there is no imam? Majority of us are from the West, I'm assuming, right? So when you go back, do we have an imam? <laughs> David Cameron is not my imam, alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, he's not my imam. No, none of, the, none of them are. No matter how nice the president or I heard, I heard the, the Canadian prime minister is proper nice. He's still not my imam. Everyone got excited when they, you know, when they sang Ta'ala al Badru Alina when the kids came. Oh, it's, it's a joke, subhanAllah. They, they look at these people with the inferiority complex. The point is that they're not our imams. <coughs> Brothers, is this not our situation that Hudayfa just asked about? Hudayfa just asked about our specific, specific situation. Our specific time. And look at what the Prophet said. Look at the first thing he said. He said, Hudayf. He didn't say Hudayf, but he said, Fa'tazil. Tilkal firqal kullah. Hudayf, cut off. Stay away from. Stay away from every, every single group and sect. Every kullah. Every single sect, without exception. And then after you cut off from them, after you cut off from them, the Prophet said, go back to the root of the tree and stay there even if death comes to you like that. The Muhaddithin who explain the shara of this hadith, if you look, they say the root of the tree is the Quran and the Sunnah. It's a tawheed and Sunnah. And we all know it has to be upon the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Brothers, when you go back, inshallah, when you go back, be wary of this and divide the people upon the haqq divide them divide them upon the haqq it's better for you to do that than to unite them upon the batil once you've divided them upon the haqq and you've separated and you point out this person is this and this person is this then brothers take them to the asr of the tree take them to the root of the tree the kitab and the sunnah and there's no way to understand it except by the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. There's no way. But when you do it, as Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, the people of the Sunnah, when they do, when they refute, when they advise, when they do their da'wah, we do it with three things. And don't fall into the mistakes that so many have fallen into in the past and we still, and myself, we all fall into this. Do it with ilm, with knowledge, with the adl, with justice. And do it with rahmah, with mercy. And that is the people of the Sunnah. And brothers and sisters, that's all what Salaf means. That's it. I know it's like a, a sigh of breath. Like, is that it? Yeah, honestly, that is all Salaf. A Salafi is someone, all he is is someone who says, brother, when it comes to religion, I want to follow what the Salaf said, what the Sahaba said. And the students of the Sahaba and the other students. Why? Because I've got textual evidence to follow them. They were the students of the Prophet. They understood the religion better than anyone else. And that's why I'm going to follow them. That's it, brothers and sisters. Wallahi. It doesn't sound that scary anymore, does it? Alhamdulillah.